What's up guys? Getting ready to go wash this dirty ass mofo. We're gonna have some weather in the 60s and 70s for like I think just a week, which is rare around this time in in uh, South Dakota. So <laughs> gonna go wash this. Hopefully most of it will come off, but as you guys know, especially with the older paint being white, it likes to stain on there. So it was fun and enjoyable but I want to clean it up while we got the chance because this is about to be really cold and I don't think we're going to get another warm week. What's going on guys? So I wanted to do a quick video for you guys really quick um, explaining just the HRG 4-inch uh, Ultimate 4-inch lift kit um, explanation uh, of what it is and do closer ups on it. I've had a few people ask. Uh, I did do a walk around of the full car of everything I did. But I'm going to crawl in there and do just the lift components and, and what I did with some of the extra stuff for the lift. But only explaining that um, so you guys have like a go-to. Uh, so this can be a how-to on what you need um, to be able to fit the 4-inch lift um, properly. So you can drive and enjoy it and not have any issues. All right. I'm going to swap the camera around here. Okay. First, we're going to start with the engine drop. So I have the one point uh, or the one and a half. Um subframe drop comes with the kit so where you're going to do that in the engine bay and this is going to be quick example we're not going to go deep into it if you have any questions asked so driver side motor mount it's kind of hard to focus on that there you go so you have two it's going to come with two longer bolts or two stud extenders depending on um you know what making my or what time of the year you got it in stock all the new ones come with nicer studs and everything um then you're going to have your transmission uh, spacers. See them there? You're going to have longer bolts or studs. I had to end up doing longer bolts because he was out of studs at the time, but you guys shouldn't have to worry about that. Like I said, I was prototyping and testing a lot of things for him. Um, so you're going to have that there. And that is all you're going to have to worry about on your, mo your motor mounts. Your rear motor mount, you will not have one. So you're going to go down to your torque mounts. So your torque mounts now are going to have... Uh, inch and a half spacer so you're going to want to replace your torque mounts i highly recommend replacing your motor mounts and your torque mounts for when you get ready to lift otherwise you're going to have more shifting of your engine you're going to have more axle issues you're going to have more unbalanced issues uh with bad motor mounts and bad torque mounts trust me guys these torque mounts matter they they mean something um so if you get the front skid plate, you're going to need an inch and a half to an inch, depending on what you have and, and header and clearance uh, um, spacer and longer bolts. So you're going to have to ask them for that. You can get the longer, tougher bolts, which I need to do where you can chop this off, get the bigger bolt, put it through, better nut. Uh, I do need to do that. I just have not done it because um, this one's been working fine for me right now. Um, so... You're going to want to do that, and um, let's see here. So, if you decide to run sway bars, um, let me tell you this. If you decide to run sway bars, White Line Performance makes a adjustable sway bar end link. I highly suggest those. Um, if you're not going to run sway bars, don't even worry about it. So you're going to have your, your inch and a half subframe there. You're going to have three down here. You see it right there. So that's going to drop your actual subframe in the front. So again, one bolt up here, three down here. So that's four. You'll get the longer bolts. You'll get what you need. Depending on your strut, um, it's going to come with uh, two and a half inch uh, front spacers and three and a half inch rear. I had to go down to a smaller one because I have the TRQ struts and springs, which are a little bit longer, a little bit stiffer spring. Uh, so therefore I had to go down to an inch and a half. That's custom what I did. Uh, could I have fit the two and a half inch? Yes, but it would have been uh, a little bit of overkill that I wouldn't have really needed at that time and just put more strain on everything. Now, when I get my extended spindles, yes, I'll probably go up to the two and a half inch. Absolutely. Um, highly recommend when you're this high, you're going to need to go with the True Heart Camber Kit and Control Arm. They will have uh they do have the lifted style now which i hear is pretty decent uh this high a lift i'm not quite sure how it acts with the um, ball joint 
To be safe, I wanted the ball joint spacers. Uh, reason why, when you fully flex, it's still gonna cause this control arm to hit the front. You're still not gonna be able to get away with that without extended spindles and have a limited amount of flex. Um, but when you're driving, you're riding, and to a certain amount of flex, it's gonna keep your ball joint angle much straighter, less aggressive, less of a uh, aggressive angle on it, which is gonna be uh, well worth it in my opinion. It's uh, done me well uh, driving on the road every day. So let's go down here. Another thing is if you have an aftermarket exhaust, you're gonna need longer hangers. It's just gonna have to happen. Otherwise that thicker two and a half inch piping exhaust is gonna hit all kinds of problems and uh, hit everything, cause all kinds of problems. Um, I suggest getting the one with the O2 sensor um, adapter and getting a test pipe or a uh, cat, whatever you're gonna go with. And you know, make sure you, if you're not mechanically, uh, you know, knowledgeable about that kind of stuff, bring it to an exhaust shop. They'll make sure it's all set up straight. But you're gonna drop your drive shaft. You're gonna drop your loops. Um, I don't have a second loop on that one. I need to get one. Uh, well, in fact, I have it for the blue, so I'll pull it off. Okay. So that's your drive shaft. That's your engine covered. That's your front subframe covered. That's your front control arms, and struts and springs. So, like I said, this will be a quick video, guys. Coming to the back. Horrible weld, or crappy looking welds, but they are seriously welded in there will hold. This is what the guy did. I just told him to get something solid on there. You're going to get your toe bracket extenders. This is going to allow you to be able to extend your toe. I highly recommend an adjustable toe arm. Uh, True Heart makes them. Uh, so does other companies. I highly recommend those. All right, so... And you're going to have your 3-inch trailer arm spacers. These are a must with this. I actually need to loosen this one and turn it just a little. Um, just to have it sitting, you know, correct. Highly recommend the white line performance trailer arm bushings. You push these suckers in with some water and soap. They're so easy. They got the rod, everything. Trust me, guys. They're nice. The, the way they work with the lift and the pivoting and moving is just amazing. So you're going to get your 3-inch trailing arm spacers. That's going to help drop this trailing arm down and back. So it's not pulling all of your control arm, your axles, everything forward, which was a problem that we were having. Um, so, and I need to hang this exhaust back up. I just now realized that. So, um, again, if you're not running um, sway bars, I'll have to do this in a minute when I'm off phone, you guys, or off the video. Um, if you're not running your sway bars, you don't got to worry about it, but I would highly suggest the Aerogenics uh, lower control arms. They are amazing. They are the exact um, length of stock. They have the quick release that you pull this pin out, boom, remove it, and then you can quick release your rear sway bar. They have three mounting points. I have mine on the highest, which kind of compresses my spring a little bit. But it allows it, the rear not to sag when I'm carrying anything heavy. Uh, if I'm towing anything with trailer hitch. I had to tow another CRB a couple days ago. Uh, it didn't even squat barely. It was nice. So up here, you're going to go with your camber arm extender. And it's going to allow, it's going to bolt to the frame here. you got to drill through and drill through here and get this nut, uh, bolt and nut. To help and then you have the stock one then you have of course you know where the stock mounting point would be uh you have another bolt adjustable camber arm highly suggest again i got black on stuff i just sprayed everything so you know just deal with it comes off um i was being lazy so that's my own fault um you're gonna want a camber arm adjustment and i highly recommend that. that's something you're gonna need and then you can see your rear subframe drop here and let me show you guys more of that. So, like I said, here's the exhaust. You can see the extended hangers I have. Uh, and look how that comes to, you know, still close to the bumper. Look how close it is to the subframe. You can see this, this is the reason why you'll need it. Um, but here, you can see if I can get in there, you can see the diff back there, the little hockey puck looking thing. And then you can see the two here. So you're going to have four on this part of your subframe, two for the diff. And that's going to drop it down. And that's going to be pretty much everything, guys. It's really, if you don't have a lot of rust, it's not that hard. What mainly is the thing is balancing. When you take it off, 
you know, balancing, loosening everything evenly, have a nice jack or someone to help you hold and get everything down and then finding a good alignment shop. You're going to want to find a good alignment shop that understands what you're doing and what's going on uh, with the lift and isn't going to sit there and try to go, you know, oh, we can't do nothing about it. It's a mess when really this can be done uh, very easily and very simple. So you see my trailing arm there. So guys, that that's from front to back. That is a quick three minute video uh, or a four minute video. Let's say five by the time I'm probably done talking, explaining um, the portion, maybe seven when I edit everything together. We'll see. But I mean, you can see everything there. That is all you need. The toughest part of this kit is getting this damn part of the strut in with the fork there. And even that, that's not that bad. Especially if you wait, excuse me there, if you wait to do your sway, arm, or sway bar uh, end links till after. Or if you're running no sway bar, uh, it makes it so much easier. So that's it, guys. Um, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, share. Uh, comment anything you else else you guys want to know I know some of you guys want to know a little bit more in depth on how I did the fender flares um, that's coming and uh, my tire and wheel set up again I do have an older video but I'll go over it again and uh, yeah so that's it that's the ultimate four inch lift kit um, and she will set up a little bit higher in the future once I have those extended spindles uh, but for now, I want to keep her where she's at uh, with this kit because of the TRQ springs um, and struts. I want to keep her where she's at because the axle angle is perfect and it's very enjoyable running and it still looks very good the way it sits. So thank you guys. Have a good one. Again, appreciate all you guys. And a couple days, the uh, giveaway is going to be uh, decided. So stay tuned for that. Thanks, guys. So I had another CRV stop by. And this is interesting because I almost bought this one when I first moved out here. It came from California in this dark hunter green that I really, really like. He's lifted on two inch spacers in the rear and I believe an inch in the front. And it looks pretty good. And he put some step bars on here that I like. And uh, you can see how his, his wheel is pulled forward. So we are going to do the four inch ultimate lift kit he wants to do. He's going to start saving for it and get this thing all done right and he wants similar wheels like mine it's got the nice front uh crv bull guard these are my old headlights off of mine my or mine and my wife's right there so i actually sold them these and uh this thing is clean guys i mean it's dirty looking right now but it's a clean clean crv so this is going to be fun he wants to do a build uh completely with me and uh, I think I got a future off-road buddy, so this is going to be fun. So we've got a few other people that are probably going to go out with us. Like I told you, next year is going to be a good time for um, uh, the channel. So stay tuned.